Mm. The ecosystem at Camp Kirk Studios is everything I never had and everything I always wanted. And we're I'm going to break the chain. Like, mm. I'm around young photographers every day, and I show love. Like, I give opportunity. There's not a, I was thinking about this the other day. There's not a person that's been around me consistently probably over a month that has not made money with me mm. or I've not put money in their pocket. I'm talking there's not a single person I can think of that friends or whatever that I didn't put money in your pocket in some type of way, put you on a play, pay you, hire you to do something with me, get, got you on this, looked out for you. Um, that's what I believe in. And and so for me, it's like I never had that, but people that's coming up under me would never have to think about that. And they're going to feel it in they a good way. It. Yeah, they know it. Fast. And I don't want nothing in return, but besides them to be the best version of themselves. Mm. Like, that's what I tell everyone around me. And they think I be tripping because they be thinking, like, what you want back? I don't want nothing, bro. I don't take commissions when I throw plays. Like, if I throw you a play right now, I don't got to call you and ask you, yo, what, yo, what they pay you? They gave you some money? Yo, kick me back. I don't even do that. Mm. It's like, yo, you go kill that. Because whenever this slow down for me and I need to fall back, I expect your ass to be there. Mm. I need more people that's going to do that. On, and I need someone, if you go a play that I gave you and you go win awards with that play, just mention my name. Yo, what's poppin'? It's your boy, Mr. J. Hill, and welcome to another episode of the J. Hill Podcast. But right now, I want to give a special thank you and shout out to our sponsor, that's Top Dog Law. So look, man, if you suffer from medical malpractice, a slip and fall, especially a car accident, make sure you call my guy Top Dog Law. That's Top Dog Law on Instagram and topdoglaw.com. Look, if you check out his Instagram, you'll see he uploading big checks. I mean, like, every day. I ain't talking about the little ones. The big ones. So shout out to my guy, Top Dog Law, topdoglaw.com. Get that money. I know I'm trying to get it. You from the DMV, right? Yeah, PG County. Yeah, man. You 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 came down here to go to school? Morehouse. Damn, yep. how was that? What made you do that? Um, I just told him like, <laughs> uh, my two school choices was University of Maryland or Morehouse, two polar opposites. And Facts. I went to Morehouse on the campus tour. It was a hot ass day. Spellman women was out and it was it was a wrap. That'll do it. Small campus. <laughs> I saw everybody that looked like me, people dressed like me. Mm. I saw myself. I went to University of Maryland, big ass campus. You walking around, you don't see no black people. Facts. It had all the amenities, but it didn't have no no culture. It wasn't nothing I was used to. So mm. it was a no brainer. <laughs> all right, man, let's get this thing popping, man. What's pop? You know what time it is? J Hill, Mr. J Hill Podcast. We got uh I mean, I don't even want to say a DMV legend, like uh, just a, a a legend of his own, a uh, world renowned. Uh, Cam Kirk is in the building, yes, sir. Yes, sir. This guy, I mean, sheesh, I've been hearing about you before. I might have even been before I even got down here. That's You've been doing your thing for a minute, man. That's love. That's a blessing to hear that, man. The name is traveling. Yo, how does it feel to be like that guy when you know? I feel like we all had those dreams of being that guy. Does it feel surreal or like yeah, you you start uh, to walk into it? Yeah, I mean, I'm a humble person, just naturally, like sometimes too humble. So mm -hmm. I don't really like live too much in that moment. Um, and then also I have very high expectations for myself. So where people see me as that guy, I'm like, man, I got, you know, levels to climb to. Right. Like I'm at the beginning, like I'm not even scratching the surface of what I really feel like I'm going to be known for when it's all said and done. So, you know, I just have a marathon mentality like that. So I feel like I'm in the beginning of the race. Hold up, right? So many questions, man. Um, hold up, hold up. So I just watched this interview with uh, Charlemagne the God and uh, and um, TD Bishop T D Jakes, mm -hmm. right? And the fact that you said like people look at me like this, but I feel like it's just a beginning. Yeah. So in the interview, he was saying, I think this is in his book, and he was saying like, you always become a student when you hit the next level, right? Oh, he was yeah. basically saying like, when you walk up the steps, the steps don't the steps don't creak until you take your foot off the last one. Right, and he was like, "Are you going to take that chance for the creek to go to the next one?" Yeah. And he basically made an analogy of like when you count to like I guess ten, like you go from uh, one to ten, and yeah. then like, are you going to stay at ten or are you going to go to eleven? Once you go to eleven, you become a beginner until Facts. you get to twenty. Facts. Then when you get to twenty, you going to stay at twenty or you going to go to twenty one? Do you get to the beginning? Yeah. So the fact that you said that is like, man, people looking at you like, man, nah, you a star. You looking at it like, man, I just started. I mean, yeah, because it's like. 
like the, the that analogy, Lauren Hill has an analogy very similar, and she looks at life as like uh, peaks and valleys. Mm. And the way she explains it is, is uh, learning and mastership. Mm. So when you're at the bottom of the valley is when you're learning. So a lot of times people don't like to be in that learning stage because that usually means you're like grind mode, you're behind the scenes. Where you been at, bro? You ain't, I ain't been seeing you do whatever. It's like, nah, I'm learning. Mm-hmm. And then when you see me pop out, I'm mastering. But then a lot of people don't like to go back down to learning. So she said that's how life is supposed to be. So a lot mm-hmm. of people learn something, master it, and try to hold on and stay at that top and they're holding on when they don't realize you got to go back down so you can go up to a bigger one. So that's one of the other reasons why I feel so humble in my approach is because I'm constantly in that that shift between learning and mastership. And I don't mind like mastering something and being at that top of the hill, but I don't mind coming back down and going in grind mode and y'all won't see me for a little minute or I'll be working on some stuff and then I'll come back up. So for me, when you're always in that phase, you're never going to feel like I'm just at the top or mm. I just made it because you're always at the bottom of another hill. Now let me ask you this then. Is that just naturally who you are or is that something you learned along the way? I think it's just naturally who I am. Like, I'm a pretty mellow person, like, okay. in general. I don't get too high or low. Like, you will never see me overjoyed, but you will never see me sitting in the corner depressed either. Like, mm. I really have a very mellow vibe about me. In the, in the heat of the battle, I'm like that. So uh, I never get too high or low. So for me, it's always been like it's more to do. It's more work to do. It's, it's a lot more to accomplish and achieve. And once you get a little taste of, of success or you see something, and if you remain a student of the game, you always know it's more levels to go. Mm. So when I realized I've done this, you know, I just hit 10, 11 years as a photographer. I'm still a baby. That's a baby company. My studio mm. has just turned six years. That's a baby company. Like when you think in the grand scheme of where I think we can go. So we, when I look at stuff like that and I say we accomplished in six years, imagine what we're doing 12 years or 20 years. So I, my eyes just always like down the line. That's, it's crazy how so many people would look at things from their perspective or a different lens. And even hearing you say like, you know, um, like you just mellow, right? Yeah. Some people would look at that and be like, man, you need to turn up or you need to do this, right? <laughs> but I look at it like from my perspective because like, I'm like the opposite. I'm super mellow, but I'm still like, I'm naturally like a just outgoing person, yeah. right? But I say all that to say, with that, you never get too high, you never get too low. I had to really learn that. Right, because like I always want to be on top, not understanding that. Well, not understanding that life got up and down. I yeah, know yeah, that, yeah. but that's because that's nat- I'm not naturally that person. I have to tell myself that, like yeah. consistently, when I get high, remain just, just stay steady, just stay yeah. steady. Because like it'd be frustrating, and I was wondering it happened to you, but you kind of answered like when you on top, you like want to stay on top almost. Yeah, yeah like, you do. All right, all right. I was wondering because like you on top is like, bro, I want to stay on top, and sometimes it can be frustrating when. Like, you know the game, but you you still got to tell yourself. It's like, I got to tell myself, bro, just relax, relax, relax. But it's like, part of me be frustrated because, like, I just want to I want it to be a point where, where this is my regular, my normal. 100%. That's crazy. I mean, that happens. Like, we, I'm human at the same time. Facts. I have human emotions. I, I want to continue to be looked at as the greatest photographer in the world. And, you know, even there are moments, I was just telling the story to a group of people yesterday. I ain't do my first photo shoot this year until May. Mm. That's scary. Like, that could, that could be scary. Like, granted, I got a lot of other shit going on, but I still want to be the in-demand photographer that you call. Mm. So imagine going five months and it's like, you know, crickets on your phone or, or people ain't coming with the right bag that you used to getting. It can be scary and mm. it can be alarming. And, yeah, you want to hold on to that spot, but it's like, oh, I need to master another part of my craft. Mm. I need to be doing something else right now that can – flip money a different way because maybe what I'm doing right now, maybe I capped out at that style or that work. I need to reinvent myself. So then I go into the kitchen and I go to work. And we do other things. Like, you know, we launching a whole new entity with studio, a whole bunch of stuff. So it gives me that time. So like I said, it's just that learning and and mastership just mentality. Now that's fire. So not once is it like, okay, let me go back to the not the drawing board, but let me go back to what got me here. Because once you said was, you know, I was went five months, five, six, yeah, five months without having a photo shoot. You know, back in the day, you probably would just be like, yo, let me shoot. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But because you are where you are, you, it's almost like I can't do that or I'm taking a step back. Do you look at it like that or is it just like? 
let me work on something those, else. Those conversations definitely come up. I mean, amongst my <laughs> team, you know okay. what I mean? Where you like, damn, like, like, damn, was you on your high horse too much? Like, you mm. know, because it, it's not like, you know, to be to be honest. So I don't want to, I want to not be honest. It's not like the calls ain't coming. Mm. They weren't coming at the right rate, or what I was used to. Right. You know what I mean? So you know, if you're used to getting a twenty, and they hitting you for fives, you like. Uh, what you what you talking about? Yeah. I, don't, I don't even know what you're talking about. Facts. I'll pass that. I'll go get that to somebody else. Um, so it was more of those conversations where it's like after a while you might have to be real with yourself and say maybe, maybe the market reset it. Mm. So maybe what you used to get for a dub now is on sale just because of the climate, recession, the way technology is advancing, people using content, people do more video than they do photo now. It might just change. It might have nothing to do with how hot you are, how dope you are. It's just you got to be aware of your industry and the standards. Mm. Things that used to go for this don't go for that no more. And that might just change. So it's more like those assessments that you have to make where you're like, I usually wouldn't do that for a five, but I might go do that for a five. Mm. Or I usually wouldn't even entertain this conversation, but let me see it through and see if maybe there's something else we can add on to it. Nice. Right? So like... We, I do opportunities like that all the time where it's like, hey, go get that, bro. Don't get mm. off your high horse. Keep yourself working. Keep the momentum going. And, uh, you know, rev the engine up again, and, and then things are kind of come to fruition. And I was wondering, like, because it happened for me, right? It's like like you say, you might get this number, and it's like, man, look, I, I know my worth. Like, yeah. right? It always <laughs> is, is that that uh, new understanding of I know my worth. And, and <laughs> yeah, I was doing this when I first started, but I ain't that person no more, so I ain't doing that no more. And then, like you said, a couple of months, in a couple of months, you're like, all right, hey, hold up. Yeah. How can I make this make sense for me? Yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> honest. That's honesty. I'm an entrepreneur. Facts. I don't have a guaranteed paycheck. Mm. So you got to have those real life assessments with yourself all the time. It don't matter if at one point you was getting X, Y, Z. Things can change. Mm. Like the price on getting, uh, flat screen TVs have changed. When it first Facts. came out, it was 3000 You yeah. got a flat screen? It'd be like 65 five. inches for like $300 Yo, now. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it just changed. It ain't no less of a TV. It's a way better than a $3,000 one. Thanks. The industry and the market changes. I and thought it was just me, bro. I swore I went into the store the other day. I'm like, yo, what the? Yeah, now I'd be tripping me out. I'd be ready to buy. I'm like, I'm ready to buy this? Is this a <laughs> Black Friday sale or something? That's crazy. Nah, it'd be wild like that. But that's just how things change over time. What used to cost a lot don't cost that much no mm. more. And some things go up. You know what I mean? So you just got to diversify what you're doing. It might be other parts of my business that's more expensive than it used to be, and that's in demand right now. You know what I mean? Mm. Yo, tell me the biggest difference, because I'm from Boston, and I got to do this. The biggest difference from, like, you know, being in Atlanta and, like, being back home. But mm -hmm. can you – I'm wondering, like, can you even answer this question? Because you wasn't doing photography when you was home. Nah. You went to school for, like, something totally different. Yeah, yeah, So I like, wasn't I wasn't Cam Kirk in, yeah. in Maryland. They don't know that person. That Damn. person was invented here. So that's hard. Um, I mean, the the overall, the culture is different. I mean, it's just a different lifestyle. Like, right. you know, I, all my family still lives in Maryland, so I go back and visit all the time, and it's, it definitely is like stepping into a different world for me. Mm. Like, the things that are important to them is not what's important mm. down here. It's not the same lifestyle. Um, that's, like, the biggest difference. So I don't know what it would be like yeah. to be a uh, like doing, I don't know if you could do what I do. That's what I was gonna ask you. In in D.C. or Maryland or Baltimore, I don't know if you can fully do it. You might have an artist or two that you can get around and and build some stuff with, but the ecosystem of this city of Atlanta is built around mm. what I do. Like mm. the fashion brands are hip hop type brands, the clothing stores, the restaurants are damn near hip hop restaurants. Like you know, everything is built around. The culture, the culture of hip hop. Of facts, yeah, so yeah. down here it's just easy. I can work with so many different clients. I was I gonna ask like you. That. I was gonna ask you a trick question. Yeah, this might be hard to answer a little bit. Do you think you could have became Cam Kirk in Merlin? Nah, not th not this version of myself. I always knew I was gonna be successful. Mm. I think God just blessed me with a certain skill set, a certain brain power. I was gonna find myself and be some but definitely not photography not what i'm doing right now but i would have probably figured something out mm. but definitely not i didn't i wouldn't have had the ideology of wanting to be known if i didn't come to atlanta mm. to be honest like a brand branding yourself i wouldn't have thought about that 
in Maryland, you get a good ass job and you move in the suburbs and you're That's chilling. Right. You're yeah. not thinking about Instagram and and all these other things. Like you're not thinking about that lifestyle. That's a fact. When yeah. you go, when you go, you only go to D.C. for the turn up or the city. But other than that, you in Maryland, you chilling. Like you, you got a job. You do to this. You cook out. Yay about family. All my friends that are still in Maryland, married, kids. Like they, they have a different ideology and setup. So. I would say I would have been successful, but I would definitely not be Camp Kirk. No, that's a fact. Because even I think about it, like, even not saying it's not creative out in D.C. and Maryland, but I'm from Baltimore. So, like, in Baltimore, it's like we have, like, those creative dreams, mm-hmm. right? We dreamers. You come to, like, Maryland and D.C., like, you, I don't want to say I'm trying to be careful, but you don't have to be a dreamer because, like, people have good jobs. Oh, like, yeah, you yeah. Know, like you work pe- for the government. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah so it's like, we, ain't think, we don't even know we can do that. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, so yeah. we dream, we having like hoop dreams per se. Like, nah, I want to be, you feel me? So like, you go out Maryland, DC, it's like, I know it's really getting money the nah, legal way. Shit, black wealth, shit. Yeah, yeah. Black wealth is out there. You know doctors and lawyers that are black. In fact, you know that people makes in all types of fields that are black and successful. Mm. It was kind of like Atlanta, but with jobs. Like I like, always say, like Atlanta don't have fact. jobs. They hustle. That's a fact. In Maryland, they don't necessarily hustle like that. They have jobs and they have good jobs. It's and black they, and excellence, but it's just black excellence on the on the I, job I, side. I, like damn. they have good jobs. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. So yo, um, j- I wanted to go back a little bit. I know you told your story like millions of times. You started off with um, uh, was it um, Young Scooter? Ooh. Yeah, Young Scooter, and then Metro. Yeah. But how did you even? How did that present itself, or or is that just Atlanta? Because from what I'm experiencing, that's Atlanta, but not no more. I mean, it's definitely Atlanta. One person can connect the dots to you to five different people. So even if those two combinations of names are under the same label, mm. so they have the same team, you know what I mean, in a certain sense. But how I got connected with uh. Scooter was actually through Ebony Ward. Mm. She manages uh, Flo Millie, Future, and Gunna, and uh, she got a few other artists. I think she she's just killing it. But, but talk to me back then. Not let's not talk about right now. Like at that time, who was she managing? Like were back, these two superstars time, at the moment? At that time, she was Future's assistant, and she owned Fly Kicks, is a shoe store on Peter Street. Okay. So Peter Street was obviously a huge hub in Atlanta at that time. So we talking about two thousand and. 11 let's just say that right after i was about to graduate college she had fly kick store i had just got my camera so the store was coming up uh the artist i was managing the artist at the time and he knew eb because he was into like streetwear and fashion and we would go to the store and that store used to be like a spot where like travis porter might have a mixtape release party at fly kicks it was like a resale store like they had jays and jordans for resale and stuff in there it was kind of a little ahead of its time but she owned that store with um, the owner of T.I.G. Fly. Mm. So her and Fly owned that store. It's called Fly Kicks on Peter Street. So me and her got cool through my artists and me just coming to the store, hanging around her. She was like the sister of basically the music industry in Atlanta. Everybody knew Eb. Everybody was coming to her store. So when Eb, me and Eb linked up at first, she knew I knew how to do stuff on a computer, like graphic design, like really small versions of it. Okay. So she used to actually hit me to make like electronic press kits was the thing back there. Yeah, yeah, EPK. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I made me an EPK. Can yeah. you make an EPK for Mike Will? Can you make an EPK for Future? And I was like designing like little graphic type stuff for Future and them at that time. So she wasn't even looking at me like a cameraman per se, um, but I was. She just knew I was smart and I added value in other ways. So. I would help her with stuff like that, and then she might have me shoot some video of, of her fly kick store commercial or two. So to be honest, she was she started lobbying for me to start working with Future. Mm. So she wanted me to be Future's cameraman. That's really how it kind of started. Um, and his manager at the time wanted another cameraman, so they put us on a trial run. Like shit, you go to Miami one week, bro, gonna go the next week. I went to Miami and I ain't gonna lie, I wasn't really ready for the moment. Like it was, it was a lot. Like future in Miami, Pluto time. We had a, like a show at Live or something. It was just craziness. It was just a big ass moment for me. Like I remember I got left at the club. Like you know, like just not knowing how to move. Like all right, when the show's over, we jet up out of here. Before we finish this story, because I definitely want to finish this story, but it's so many other young cameramans coming up that might not understand what that looked like, right? So you said, I wasn't ready for the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Compared to then, right? Because you probably didn't understand that you wasn't ready for the moment until yeah, yeah. you came out of it. 
What does that look like not being ready to, for the moment you got left? But if you can go into that some more. Yeah, I mean, what it looks like is just not not being fully on your P's and Q's. Um, I didn't really understand how it is to move with an artist. I did no research, but I had no mentors either. I had mm -hmm. nobody that did it before that. Like what, that though? Give me some details. You about to be uh, a, a lot of people mentors. Like if it, um, Paint a picture. Like you going to Miami, Pluto, big artist, whoever it is, right? What I know being on your P's and Q's, what does that look like? We got a show at Live. Like what is what is... What does that look like? I mean, it's it's um, it's hard to really explain like what it is because if I say what I did, somebody else would be like, "That's that's un that's not a realistic thing." But basically, back in those times, obviously, like Future and his team, they just had a fear of being out of town. Mm -hmm. So basically, when the show ends, we leave. Mm -hmm. Like we don't linger. When I get off this mic and I sing that last song, we run out the club and we get in our car and sprint and go there's like no way to prepare for that every artist ain't the same okay. i've been with ray sherman they don't do that they hang and they look out for you they know who you are blah, blah blah if there's anything i can say about being prepared for that moment i didn't make my presence felt enough around the artist for him to actually to actually build a rapport with him early enough or with the team enough so they wouldn't think to leave me mm. so i think that's one thing i can say is like do you know anybody can you do you know the security guard? Were you good with X, Y, Z, the manager, the role manager? If you don't make that relationship with the artist, do you know at least other people that can make sure you're good? Okay. I didn't necessarily do that coming out. I was moving timid, scared. I, I was just not really talking to no one. So it was easy was the for the Was good? Because that's what I'm assuming. When you say not, not ready for the moment, I'm thinking, like, you ain't getting the right shots. You like We never even got there. Like, but I got left the first day. The next, by the time I link them, and this ain't no Uber. I can't just call an Uber. Right. So I got to figure out how to get back to the hotel. The next day we go to the hotel, I wake up in the morning expecting to get a phone call. It's me not being proactive, waiting on them to tell me what we doing next. Come to find out Future and the rest of the team done checked out that hotel and it's already in a whole nother hotel. Damn. I'm hitting them like, well, where y'all at? Like, you, oh, we had a whole nother hotel. Nobody told you? Nah, I'm broke. Also, yeah. how do I get there? There's no Ubers again. Mind you, there's no Ubers. Get in that taxi and pay the 40, whatever it is, to get over here. But you got to get over it. Then I get over there. It just was too fast for me. Okay. Like, I wasn't ready for it. It wasn't even about the pictures. They don't even think I even got to turn anything in. I didn't, I wasn't ready for it. So mm -hmm. by the time I didn't capture everything I needed to capture because I wasn't ready for it. Okay. So it wasn't really about the pictures so much. I just couldn't, I proved I couldn't move with them. I was too slow. He was too, man, where he at, bro? He ain't even here. He at yeah. the other hotel? He ain't come downstairs? You should be waiting on know. us, type. I ain't waiting Why on ain't he hit me in the morning? Why yeah. was he at the lobby downstairs? He ain't paid, he ain't get the call time? He ain't talked to such okay. such? Okay, You ain't got his number? You ain't get the road manager number? You ain't called? Like, you know, it was like shit like that where I would say I wasn't ready. Like, I know how to move now, like what to do, how to prepare, and how to do that. But at that time, it's my first time out of town with an artist. I didn't know what I was doing. Okay. I'm thinking that everything is professional, and you're going to get a phone call from the manager, and they're going to say, hey, Cam, are you up? Come downstairs. We're about to leave. Nah, it's like, we out. Right. It's crazy because, like, I even tell the people I work with, because I work with a lot of younger ones, <clears throat> not that season, and I'll be telling them, like, outside of that, you want to be prepared for the moment as, like, you own a moment, right? right and yeah. I'm not, like, a cameraman, but, like, these are things that I've just learned over time. So, like, what I mean by that is, like, owning a moment is, like, if you want a picture or a particular shot, get the shot. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, definitely got to get You the don't shot. want to tell somebody to do this or, yo, I couldn't get it because they was in a way. No, you got to own it as if Facts. it's yours. Facts. So it, it kind of sounds similar, but back to your story. I so mean, That's definitely a fact, though, <laughs> to, to that point. I mean, I'm just talking about the logistical ways I wasn't ready, but right. obviously skill set wise, I wasn't ready. Mm. Also, like I would never have, hey, future, you mind looking this way and taking the picture? I was too scary. Mm. I was too timid. It's actually that's how I developed my style that actually became iconic because I became known for taking candid photos. I had mm. to figure out a way to get over my shyness and my fear of talking to people and develop a creative style around it. So that's how I started to actually win because most of my photos became candid's raw people didn't even know i was in the room taking a picture of them so i had to make a weakness of mine turn into a strength creatively but of course at that time i wasn't ready to tell future hey bro you mind looking this way you mind doing this you mind doing that i didn't have the right equipment i was using a mm -hmm. lens that wasn't functional for being on the road 
So I had, if you know about cameras, I had a 50 millimeter lens that's tight. Yeah. So as I'm trying to shoot future, and if we this close, I'm too close to you. Facts. Like, how I'm going to get, well, you know, these rappers want to show their whole fit. I'm already disadvantaged. I only got one got lens. Portrait. I ain't got no light on my camera. I ain't yeah. got no flash. Like, I'm already just not prepared to do it. So it's little things like that that obviously also didn't allow my work to just blow nobody away. It was like, all right, he cool. I think that's where I heard it from now, bro. I swear. I I, I know I said it, but it might have been a while ago. And, and I was like, this is when, like, Candace first became a thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, man, I like this type of picture. But I didn't even know the name of it uh, yeah. at the time. And I think somebody might have mentioned your name. They were like, that's how, like, Cam Kirk shoot or something yeah, like that. Yeah. This was, but this was like, this was, I don't even think I had a pod. This is way yeah, yeah. before podcast or something like that. So I think that's what it was. But, okay, so you wasn't prepared for the moment, right? Let me get back to your story. You come back, mm -hmm. and that's when they say, all right, we want to line you up with Scooter. Maybe we could go do down that. To, go work with Scooter. Mm. Like, you did just go there, go work with him. Maybe, this ain't even, they ain't even know he probably was about to be who he. Yeah, they, they, he had, like, Columbia had maybe just hit 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 the streets. It wasn't doing what it was what it's obviously doing now. But it was, like, basically, like, G League. Like, not not to put him like that, but that's what it was. He was developing. You go work mm. with the rookie and figure it out. Y'all y'all more closer on the same level, mm. right? So you go develop his brand and his look. And that was her looking out for me. And it was the best thing that could ever happen to me. That changed my life. you was able to build with him, I'm assuming. I was able to build with him. My creativity was able to shine. He didn't have a name much bigger than mine. We was on the same level. So mm. when you're seeing his stuff and getting familiar with his image, I was creating it. Mm. So now who's, like every photo you know of Scooter, it was like Cam took that. That was Cam's work. Versus a future, he's taking photos every day. It's 3,000 people shooting him. Big shows, photo shoots, magazine covers, and all that. It's so many pictures of his image. With Scooter, it wasn't. I was creating his image, and I was able to build all around with him. I was Scooter's damn near assistant. I was his photographer. I was his public relations, PR, his internet help. I was the one. I built his SoundCloud for him. I was releasing music for him. I was doing his graphic design work. I put. I made most of his album covers. You know what I mean? That also helped me because I was able to slide my photos in as covers. Mm. Like. Yeah, we going. We ain't gonna use. No, I'm gonna use this one right here. And now I got my first album cover. So Columbia, but I'm assuming Columbia was still paying you for your work, though, right? And I was making, and this is no not because I love. I was making 150 dollars a show. Okay, so that's, but that's not even the work you were doing far as album covers. No, I never got paid for any of that. All right, so let me be selfish for a second, bro. I just made a tweet the other day. I said, bro, like I want. I'm for everybody, like. uh um, getting exposure and, yeah. and growing with people, but like, I want to afford. I want to be able to afford everybody because yeah. nowadays I feel like it's no growing with people now. Like I feel oh, like yeah. if you ain't really paying somebody's salary, you you really don't have the leverage to be able to say I want you exclusive to me. Yeah. But I feel like at a time it was like that, and I'm just definitely it was. Yeah. I'm wondering like, do you think it would have been the same thing in today's? society because today's society is like okay i shoot for you for a second right and the moment i get in the room with somebody else that has a bigger opportunity and there's no knock to you thank you for that but it's like now I, I gotta shit. grow right yeah, and, shit, and i'm yeah. wondering like looking at it like that but compared to your, your experience with like man i stuck with somebody and this really helped me hell yeah do you do you think there's a space for that in today's society at all i mean i think the younger generation of creators have now have a blueprint of what success looks like let's speak specifically to photographers through me other dope photographers that have came out and have made it success for themselves they know what success looks like mm. so they're able to like see it differently oh okay. when i was doing it there was no body i looked up to okay. there was not a cam kirk of my gen or time that, that was sense. the guy that was killing it that i could see what it took for him to do it so when I was in that room, all I knew was pet, like eat the food that's on my plate. That like, makes sense. Go kill this, bro. Keep yeah. going and build. Now, I also had vision. I knew when I latched on to the right person. Like mm. if, and it's, I say this to this day, like if anybody knows Young Scooter's story, if you followed it, he was bigger than, there was no Migos. There was no Rich Homie Quan, There was no Young Thug. It was Young Scooter. Mm. Like we went from 1500 a show to back then 2012 he was getting 35,000 a show mm. when hip hop wasn't doing what it's doing now yeah, thanks. he was killing that all independent and we were working with everybody this man had songs with Wyclef John Cameron Fat Joe like I met all of these people 
through Young Scooter. So I knew I was working with a superstar at that mm. time too. Birdman was around us. Like I knew what it was. So I also saw that vision of like building with this is going to make me give me a larger piece of the pie mm. and I'm going to be able to do a lot more with Scooter and I'll be more in control of my destiny here. Um, so I kind of knew that with him. That makes sense. You got to got to see the vision and, and honestly you got to be somebody that have some type of value other than outside of your two yeah, eyes. And you got to take a risk. <laughs> Today's society is too soft. They're mm -hmm. not willing to take a risk. You know what I mean? The most generation, they want money now. They don't have a vision. They don't have patience also. So it's, it's microwave era, which just everything around them makes everything so fast. Facts. So they don't know that this was, I was playing a three to four year game longer than that when I was working with Scooter. I had a vision for not today or tomorrow, but two years down the line when when he's the biggest artist out the South, where would I be at? And how would that take my career? We were talking about label deals for him. And when he starts to develop artists, we were already thinking like how I'm going to play a part in a label, mm. like something that that's beyond whatever we was working on at that time. So I already knew to like the patience of it all. Like it's going to build. I see where I'm going with him right now. And I see what it's going to lead to. That same thing obviously happened with Metro Boom. When I met him at Morehouse dorm room, mm. I saw a vision like he's going to be this like we built it like we saw it together like but I saw the patience I saw one day we're going to be rocking shows with Drake I saw one day these things happen and I was there to witness when those pieces started to form together but that was a two to three year process Man, and it took hard. time but a lot of people don't have they don't have to see it as slow as I did because it's it's a lot more instant now which I will say things move a lot faster so Yes. Like you don't have to build with one person. You don't. And that's just the way of that's how it is now. Yeah, you don't. Now you you keep jumping ship to ship, you're not really planting a, a strong foundation for yourself. Mm -hmm. So you can end up, you know, failing, you know, thinking you're just climbing a tree moving fast. So it's risky in that nature. Mm. But you got to know who to who to bet on. And I've always had been blessed to be surrounded by great people to bet on. Like that's fire. Yo, this episode is sponsored by The Morning Meetup. Man, shout out to my guy, David Shines, man. He's probably one of the few people I know who actually built multiple multi-million dollar businesses, right? He created The Morning Meetup to help other entrepreneurs do the same thing. Now, listen, as an entrepreneur myself, I know how hard it can get, especially when we start making money and we get to like this financial cap that we can't get past. And honestly, let's be real. They say it ain't what you know is who you know. We probably can't get past this cap because we either, one, outgrew the people around us, or two, we just being lazy and winging in the rooms we need to be in. It's just plain and simple. But trust me, this is your time because the morning meetup is that room we got to be in. It's filled with, filled with entrepreneurs getting to it. They reading different books every month, right? They holding each other accountable. And it's just honestly just something dope to be a part of. So listen, if you're an entrepreneur and you're trying to get to this bag, you're trying to flourish more than you've been flourishing now... You got to go to the morningmeetup.com. That's www.themorningmeetup.com and join now. Let's get to it. I see you there. That's hard. Okay. Okay. Hold up. More old questions real quick. Um, I think you mentioned something about Instagram, not not like in another interview, right? And I was curious. So you think you talk about people being able to see it now, mm -hmm. right? They wasn't able to see it then. Then we come up with an app called Instagram. Yeah. Right. So my perspective, I'm thinking like Instagram would be a photographer's dream. Hell yeah. But I feel like I heard you say somewhere that that was kind of the opposite because now you like kind of giving your work away for free. It killed the business aspect of photography. It created a whole new industry. So it reset the entire landscape of photography. So photographers before me, Jonathan Mannion, Chi Modu, Zach Wolf. Their whole industry was built around, I do a shoot for you and you got to pay me per image. And if we do a shoot, you might, you got to pay a certain amount of photos. You might only choose three. And they were able to charge astronomical amounts of money because artists were only doing shoots like once a year, mm. if anything, if they did that once a year. When I met Gotti for the first time, he told me he ain't did a shoot in three years. Mm. Like they didn't have to. They wasn't on a magazine cover. They weren't doing their personal shoots. So as a result, the budgets were bigger because shoots were not as frequent. When Instagram came about, it was like, I got to post something today and I got to post something tomorrow and the next day. So it became content overload. So now you're do you're getting paid this maybe the same amount of money, but you got to do way more work. So it's like stretched out. It's just stretched differently. So 
and you got to give it away for free. Mm. You know what I mean? You have to post it. And then once you post it, your work is now on the internet. People can screenshot it, post it on their page. Now you got a photo you took of Young Thug or somebody like I have. It's on T-shirts next day. Like it's you're giving people so much access to your catalog. But back in the day, you wouldn't. The only photo you'll see from that shoot of Jay-Z is the album cover. You wouldn't see the rest of it. But now you have to keep doing that to market yourself. So it changed the industry. So now my generation of photographers became like it almost even a playing field for us and in, in the older generation as well. Because it's like it's a whole new ball game. Mm-hmm. It reset. So now how do you navigate in this world? How do you build a name for yourself when, yes, you got to give your work away for free? So licensing images isn't the same bag anymore. Like photo shoots aren't the same bag anymore. Mm-hmm. So like how I mentioned how myself, I had to reassess the market and say, damn, you used to get an X, Y, Z per shoot. Maybe maybe the market changed. Those photographers had to do the exact same shit. They was used to getting 50, 60, maybe even 100 to shoot. And now they back to they back to square one. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It just happened that way. So uh, Instagram was a gift and a curse. The gift of it is just to be positive. We were able to build a brand for ourselves. You wouldn't know who took a photo of such and such, nice. but now you're willing to get you're able to get tagged. Someone can come to your website or your Instagram profile, learn about you, get access to the rest of your catalog. No one would ever been able to do that before. And then you also people also had a more fondness for pictures. So now everybody wanted a photo. Mm-hmm. So now you're at, you're in demand more. Although you're not getting paid as much, you're in demand more. Everybody wants a photo. Every rapper wants a photo now. They didn't used to want a photo. Now they need one. Yeah. So now you're shooting more often. You may not be getting paid the same bag, but you're shooting and you're creating more and more work. So it was a gift and a curse. It definitely brought down the value of it, but it gave you more exposure and more opportunity to work. Mm. Yeah, I want to ask you, uh, so when, we, when you look at Instagram, right? or before I even get to the Instagram, I had a question about threads, but before I get there, right? You said you never really had like no mentor. Yeah. But I'm I'm assuming once you got in it, you had some people that you kind of studied. Or no, not not even. I studied. So I never had a, a physical mentor like someone I could sit in a room and say, Hey, how did you XYZ? But I studied. So let me I ask studied you from day one. So you know, we always hear this and I think you mentioned even about like, you know, uh, becoming like the rapper of mm-hmm. like you know just like when it comes to marketing and, and, and marketing yourself right and we always hear like in the rap scene or the hip-hop culture uh idols become rivals yeah right so now you say instagram come and it kind of like levels the playing field so now like the old guys the people that you might have been looking up to at one point kind of gotta like compete with you because it's it's yeah, yeah. it's all leveled now did you see the Idols become rivals, and 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 when you if you did, how was that first interaction with it? I'm I'm so I'm such a genuine person that I don't have no issue with walking up to my favorite photographer and say, "Bro, you're my favorite Facts. photographer." No, right, right. Like, so I kind of defeat any of that energy out the gates because okay. if I like you and I look up to you, I'm gonna tell you, I like you, I look up to you. You're the reason I do this. You're the goat. I don't have no I don't walk in the room with anybody. So. I probably would have defeated, like, but I've seen it within the industry. I've had calls with OG photographers, and they look at me as a peer now because of the way I carry myself. But I've had calls with them like, man, these young photographers fucking up the industry. They don't know what they're doing, and da 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 da. So I've, I know that energy exists, but um, even but I've never witnessed that. But it's crazy because even like you saying I defeated, it's st- I've witnessed it's still people that will like. I don't want to say son you, but it's like be hating on you because of you because you are up here now. Like you could come and be like, yo, bro, I salute you. Like you a legend, bro. You one of the reasons I'm here. Yeah. And they still kind of like, yeah, they they support you or they they salute you only when it ain't in the way of what they got going on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, now don't get it twisted. It ain't been too many people that just wrapped their arms around me and mm-hmm. and and held me up. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like the times that I've encountered like legends that I, I really look up to. It's been when we like shared a stage together and we were put on a project together. Okay. I don't, they didn't like just, hey man, I love what you're doing. Let me tell you how to do more. Right. I never got that. I, to this day, I've never gotten that from anybody that's like, you're killing it, bro. But let me tell you some things to look out for or hey, let me give you some game on what to do. That's why I still don't have a mentor. Like, I'm still figuring shit out. So if you're looking at it from that standpoint, yeah, I've never been embraced by you know the ogs in that regard like a few look out for me like motion family 
they hold it down. If I call anyone from Motion Family, they'll pick up and they'll tell me what I need or, or help me. They've helped me with production on a few projects like that. So they're they're like an exception. But I would say it's not like I ain't been just like armed around, embraced, like held up to the level when I know I could have been. You know what I mean? I would say that. So they say that revenge is the sweetest joy, right? So a lot, I mean, not, I said revenge, success is the sweetest revenge, right? Oh, yeah. So a lot of times when we successful, a lot of things really don't bother us the same. But I'm curious to know, even though you're so successful, right, you don't really got nothing to be mad about, is it still times where now you think about it and that shit hurt? Hell yeah. I was just I was curious, like, because, like, some, like, sometimes you overlook them when you're successful, you don't need to worry about that. Nah, you still, I mean, there. I my feelings are more towards, like, if I'm being honest, like, music industry mm. and people that I know I like, you know, sacrificed a lot to ensure they get where they need to be. Or just people in general, people that that been around my ecosystem and know what I do. Um, you always want to feel validated or you want to feel included and you want to feel like they still think of you the way you think you think of them. And, yeah. and success has the ability to divide people and separate people in different lanes. So those feelings definitely exist. There's definitely, you know, moments where I, I'm witnessing something that I used to be a part of, and I'm like, damn, why ain't I there? Like, oh, what happened? Why ain't, I, why ain't I a part of that one? Like, that's weird, or whatever the case may be. I'm human. I have emotions. I want to be a part of everything. Um, so those definitely exist. But that probably also make it probably what makes you such a great leader, too, and why you got the studio, Canker Studios, yeah. right? And you probably, like, you probably got camera – guys that like really embrace you and love you because you are to them what nobody ever was to you a million a million percent mm. the ecosystem of camp kirk studios is everything i never had and everything i always wanted and we're i'm going to break the chain like mm. i'm around young photographers every day and i show love like i give opportunity there's not a, i was thinking about this the other day there's not a person that's been around me consistently probably over a month that has not made money with me mm. or i've not put money in their pocket I'm talking, there's not a single person I can think of that friends to whatever that I didn't put money in your pocket in some type of way. Put you on a play, pay you, hire you to do something with me, get, got you on this, looked out for you. Um, that's what I believe in. And and so for me, it's like I never had that, but people that are coming up under me will never have to think about that. And they're going to feel it. And they know way. it. Yeah, they know it. Right. And I don't want nothing in return, but besides them to be the best version of themselves. Mm. Like, that's what I tell everyone around me. And they think I be tripping because they be thinking, like, what you want back? I don't want nothing, bro. I don't take commissions when I throw plays. Like, if I throw you a play right now, I don't got to call you and ask you, yo, what yo, what they pay you? They gave you some money? Yo, kick me back. I don't even do that. Mm. It's like, yo, you go kill that. Because whenever this shit slow down for me and I need to fall back, I expect your ass to be there. Mm. I need more people that's going to do that. On, and I need someone, if you go a play that I gave you and you go win awards with that play, just mention my name. That's lit. That's going to take me way further. It's a legacy for me. That's a, that's what it's about because that keeps you alive. So I plant seeds like that. Like I was just telling that story yesterday. I remember looking in the Source magazine and it was a graphic and it was a Dr. Dre family tree. And like Dr. Dre was at the top, and it was like all of these like tree imagine. branches of people that he's Snoop. embraced. <laughs> yes, yeah, Eminem, 50, the game, Eminem, I and imagine. they descendants because you get a piece of their yeah. descendants. Kendrick, blah 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 blah, and you get there, and it's, it was like crazy. And I remember being young and looking at that, like, damn, like that's legendary, because Dre ain't, ain't even got a rap or do nothing anymore, and we look at him as the god of production mm. although what he produces like one song a year if that he can yeah. go on hiatus and the name is as relevant as it ever is because he has so many people that he's touched mm. and embraced and that's what when it's all said and done that's going to be a camp kirk thing you're going to have a camp kirk tree and there's going to be a descendants of people not to say it like a bad way like the descendants like they my sons and them, but you're going to have people that I've, been, I've touched and and things that i've had my hands on that's going to be mega Bro, hey, oh my God, bro, you said so much that like I be speaking about because even what people I tell people I was just talking about this on um a ball alert show. I'm like, yo, when you do good, when you do right by people, it shows. Same mm -hmm. way if you do bad by people's energy, like hell yeah, whatever energy you give out, you won't get a uh like the same energy back, right? And I feel like, like you said, 
I don't want nothing from you. You just be the best person that you can be. Because yeah. what's going to happen is it's going to show, right? If if I, if I if I continue to do great for my people, they're going to carry my name forever. That's what legacy is for, right? Yep. But the same on the on the other end. If I fuck these people over, that is going to carry in so many rooms that I'm not in. So I'd rather continue to do good for people because yep. my name will carry forever in a positive way. It's it's just crazy that you said I literally just talked about that. Another thing you, you had mentioned is about like just like that tree. And I was uh, I was literally just telling my fiance this the other day. I was like, bro, you know what I think I had I gotta come to the the realization of or I'm coming to the realization of is I might not have the biggest podcast in the world, right? But I feel like it's somebody who's inspired by me whose shit might be bigger than mine. Yeah, and that's bigger than anything I could think of. Like yeah. I, could, I could ever imagine because like the fact that you inspired somebody and they going to give they going to show the love they want to salute like yo yeah, yeah. it was because of Cam Kirk bro like my studio and you probably don't even know the person nah that <laughs> like, happens all the time I meet people all the time and like y'all picked up a camera because of you I'd be like damn that's crazy that's crazy I was just back at Morehouse the other day and it was uh, like ten people I ran into on cameras with cameras in their hand that never existed when I was there. Mm. And they all exactly knew who I was. Like, nigga, we here because you went to Morehouse. Like, fire. you went here, we here. And That's we got our awesome. cameras and we ready. <laughs> and it's like, wow, like, nah, that impact is crazy. That's, That's like crazy, that Tupac bro. quote that he said. I don't know how to say it word for word, but it's that same concept. Yeah, he said, like, I might not be the one to uh, change the world, but I'm going to um, inspire yeah, the next person. That will. Some, yeah, something like that. And he has. And no, that's, that's crazy. crazy. Even like, bro, even I think about these conversations, like, the fact that I could get next to somebody like yourself, stars, whatever, whoever, right? And we can have these conversations and like, like you said, so many people that's at Morehouse with a camera will look up to you, but they probably, they probably look at you like the biggest they could get probably, yeah. right? And the fact that you can sit across from me and be like, man, yeah, still to this day, I feel like I sometimes feel left out of, of situations where I, I, I wish they would include me. And it's probably somebody that would never thought of that. Like, wait, what? You? Yeah. That's crazy. Nah, it's wild. It ain't, it ain't. That's why I don't see myself all the way there yet. Cause it ain't, there's still moments where I feel left out or I'm not in the room where I could be, I'm getting overlooked or still I'm the underdog or I'm still, you put, you chose someone else over me. There's still that competitive fire in me. That's like, and it still shows to this day where it's like, shit, this person ain't want to pay that fee. Damn. They ain't think I was worth that. Damn. Motivation. I gotta go. I gotta go. I gotta figure it out. I swear to God, bro. Keep okay. Keep going. Cool. Like, okay, They're cool. Like, oh, shit. Okay. I, I gotta go. Facts. Damn. Nah. But nah, you definitely just paying homage. Like, nah, you definitely that nigga. And it's just, it's just, it's, it's weird to see it because it's like, it give me hope to be honest. Because it's like, damn, this nigga think that? No way. Nah. It's like no way. It's like what? Let me ask you this then: Do you think if you wasn't as humble, you would be a little farther? I think I would have probably got there faster. I would have got to certain places faster for sure. Mm. Um, but I think I would have also it would have came with uh, more stress and drama, mm. hatred. Um, like to this day, bro. Like I could probably count on my hands the amount of time I've seen someone, even on Twitter. Like just want some tweet, say something negative about me. Mm. Like to this day, like and it, that's how much it stands out to me. Like if I ever search my name and I see some, like camp shit ain't that far. Like it's to this day, I I don't get that. I don't get crazy comments. I don't get yo you ain't you ain't this or like I get nothing but love mm. like I get nothing but love like people tell me that all the time I, I don't even have enemies I've never had an enemy mm. I've never just had people just not like me like for whatever the case may be so I think a lot of that comes with humbleness and like you know moving in a room you know stealthy and just like not really disrupting the vibe or the energy I give you nothing bad to say about me mm. and I think if I come in with my chest out a lot more or ego or bravado, I welcome negativity. you know negativity. Even if it's even if it's warranted, mm. ego is like you welcome like someone to want to like shoot you down. That's just like human nature. But if right. I'm in the room chilling, shaking everybody's hand, I walk in the room, speaking to everybody, treating everybody with the same level of respect, I don't make anybody feel inferior to me. So as a result of that, they got no reason to not like me. But you know, with life nowadays, especially your existence can make a nigga not like you because they hate everything about themselves. Yeah, that's that's a fact. That's crazy. Like, 
So no matter what, somebody gonna hate you. So let me let it's me defeat that. You gotta defeat that energy. Mm. It's 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 uh it's ways to defeat all types of energy. I'm not gonna say I never went anywhere and got a a weird stare, a weird glance, but I defeat negative energy with love. Like no, you know, thanks. I used to tell my boy that my best friend he's from New York and he's the opposite. He's ego maniac. Like he walk in the room and everybody knows his presence. When he first moved to Atlanta. You know, I was fearful of him. Like, yo, bro, you people going to shoot your ass or fight you one of these days. Like, you got to learn how to defeat people, bro, because your energy gives off such a, like, who the fuck this nigga think he is? Who he think he is? And I used to teach him, tell him that day, yo, bro, you in a room with somebody and you bump them. Say you in a club, you bumped them the wrong way. My bad, bro. Yeah, My bad, sure. big dog. Mm -hmm. I ain't even, even if you feel like you ain't doing that, ain't nothing wrong with it. doing that. It ain't worth it. It, it ain't, ain't worth where it. it's going to go because... Someone gonna look at you and your demeanor and think that you own that. And it's like, we defeat people. Like, oh, you got a problem? I did something to you? My bad, bro. And move on. Like, it's and I do that it. to this day with whoever. Like, oh, you don't like me? What I do, bro? We good? It's crazy because even coming from like somebody, this might sound ignorant, but like I'm from Baltimore, right? So like I'm from like the streets of the, the, the ghetto and shit. Yeah. And I hear like, I don't know, like somebody that might be coming from, I don't know, it's the opposite of my spice, yeah. right? And they react in that way. And I and I remember at one point in time, I would be like so judgy about it, man. Nah, they ain't been where I've been, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. As I got older, it's funny because I got more like that person because yeah. now I understand that I have nothing to prove. I know that if a, if it came down to a fight, I didn't fought, I didn't won, I didn't, I'm good. I don't yeah, need yeah. to prove nobody that exactly. I'm tough. So even if I didn't, even if I came from the slums of the slums, I'm talking to my guys that might come from the projects of the hood or whatever, it's not worth it. At what, all. What, you knowing you, right? And somebody bump you. Let's say you know if you could whoop the ass. What's the point of proving that you're going to whoop the ass? You're going to get arrested. You're wasting time behind bars. You Somebody shoot you. It's not even worth it, bro. It's just, you it's, gotta look over your shoulder it, next time you out. You know who they know, what they know, what energy they put out in the universe. It's not worth it, bro. It's never worth it. Like it's, it's always, you know, you never should just be a bitch or never, you know, defend your honor as a man. But certain situations, you just defeat them bro, at the door. Like it's not worth it, it's bro. It's not worth it. I remember I got robbed right by a BB gun. Real, real story. And I was like, I seen that it was a BB gun, it was like a shotgun BB gun. And I end up fighting a guy. Long story short, I'm telling my story in like a bar or something, like as if like, yeah, like ain't nobody robbed me with no BB gun. And the old head came to me. He said, "Bro, what what are you trying to take your phone, your money? You could get that back. Imagine if he shot you in the eye or artery with a BB. You feel yeah. me? Like that will fuck up your life for something that you can get back. And yeah. when he told me, I'm like, damn, because I'm thinking like, yeah, I'm tough guy. Like yeah, you ain't yeah. robbed me with no BB gun. And he broke it down. Like bro." For what? You get that back. You file an insurance claim. You you get that shit back easy. Yeah, nothing to talk about. Man, it's a lot of some some things just come with age and knowledge. Definitely. That's, I mean, it's, it's seeing a bigger picture and facts. keeping the, the the main thing the main thing. Like that's the end result. Like and and that's we deal with that with conflict resolution and and work and productions all the time. Like you know, I I have to I had to learn that and had to have that patience even with like music artists. Mm -hmm. Like I've been on set with music artists and had to wait eight hours for the artist to show up. That you know, that could be emotionally triggering. Like you could be one who the fuck this nigga think I am. He think I'm here for the like, but you gotta move your energy differently and know that if I leave this set and don't get this photo shoot done, the client or whoever paying ain't gonna get whatever need done. So I could be whatever, but I still gotta get it done. And then once I start shooting, I gotta give it my best because if this photo come out and it ain't hot, that's my name and brand. So what you really mad about? Go do something else. Go go chill. Go play a video game. Go do something right quick while you're waiting and kill the time. And you know it because ain't, ain't no point of you, whatever. And then you got to know that the artists don't give a fuck. Facts. So there's no part of them that's going to make them feel a way. Just because you feel a way, they don't have the empathy to care about how long you've been here. So ain't no point of arguing or telling them about it. It's, it's like, make just, it worse. Just go do Come what on. you got to do. <sighs> yeah, you mad? Go do what you got to do. Did you get paid? You got paid? The main thing's the main thing. The yep, main shit thing, came the out. Main thing. We lit. Because if you try, even anything, you try to get an interview, get a photo shoot, whatever, it's like keep the main thing the main thing because at the end of the day, if you got something to gain from it, keep the main thing the main thing. That's it. <laughs> That's it. I still That's got mine. Like, I don't care Ooh. how you felt or what they felt. I got my, I got what I needed. That's so we lit. Fire. Let me tell Let me talk on your, uh, your, um, the, uh, the ego coat for a second, right? 
you said you could count on your hand how many people said something negative about you, right? Doesn't that kind of make the work ethic stronger, kind of? Because now you know that people are looking for a specific thing, right? Like, it's like, man, my name is up here. I got to keep it up there. I oh, can't yeah. even do anything below that. Oh, yeah. I don't, I don't, but I don't jeopardize or play with my name. My name is everything. It's my life. Mm. You know what I mean? It's, I named my second biggest company after me, Cam Kirk Studios. It's my life. You can't take that from me. So I don't really take that kindly or lightly. And I hold anybody that is involved around me to a high standard to do that. We move with like the most professional integrity type spirit, my whole team. Like we give at the studio, we give A1 customer service, like everything about it. I'm very fragile about anything with my name. A bad review will leave me up for five days. Like I, I'll be thinking about that shit forever. I'll be trying to change it, fix something. Like to this day, I'm like that way. If I get a negative DM, I'm going crazy at the studio staff like what what is this person saying they would yeah like i'm i'm very very particular about that because like you said it's it's my legacy is it's attached to it this day and age all it takes is one negative thing to one. happen that can ruin everything you work for it could be a misunderstanding because on the internet they don't have time to hear both sides nope. of the story they only gonna hear one side of that story, and run with it, and they gonna run with it. Especially somebody like me that doesn't have anything negative. They, they, wait they can't believe I don't. They, they waiting. waiting. They, they waiting. waiting. <laughs> they like, ain't no way. I knew he was up to something. Thanks. Ain't no way that dude been doing all that. And he, so I have to be very particular about how we move and how I move, what I do, what I allow myself to be a part of, and that's why I'm particular about the brand and what I attach myself to, what I align myself with, because it's like. I got to do my due diligence to ensure I'm careful with my words, my mm. actions, what I post. That's why I don't I don't like Twitter or even social media that much because I always got to second guess what I'm about to post because yeah. I like it. Is it worth it? Is it, are they going to understand what I'm saying? Can I post a joke? Like I ain't even about to post a joke. Maybe they don't get it. You got to be very careful about everything. Um, mm. That's the like, if anything, I would say that's like the negative sides of being in the spotlight. And, and being out there it's like you're constantly being reviewed and and under a microscope and when you are doing something so well and you're so pure at it people are people can't believe that mm. they know it's something on the other end that's how that's why people don't like lebron james to be honest yeah he don't got no flaws but i mean they hate the greats though everybody they hate the greats jordan any kobe jo uh lebron tom brady Anybody that was like super great, but every like every one of them got like some little thing where like you got like, ah, right, I knew yeah. you wasn't perfect. Facts, LeBron is probably LeBron one of is the like only the one. closest to it. Like yeah. not a scandal, great husband, yeah, your husband, family, your kids yeah, look yeah, yeah. Are, are on point. Like your business acumen is good. Your teammates right. say you're the best teammate. Yeah. The coaches love you to this day other players in the league love like it's like he just been and he's been in the spotlight since he was 16 with not a fight scandal not a, a police was called to a scene he was at like but people hate that person too though like coming up we hated the teacher's pet yeah they ain't do nothing wrong i'm <laughs> saying they hate it they hate him they <laughs> yeah, so pure like they can't yeah, wait the second lebron ever get if god willing he don't so they can get something, they're going to be like, I, I knew that nigga been back. X, Y, Z, and X, Y. So I said I wanted to toggle on your, uh, like, your ego quote, and I meant by like, so because everything is is no smut on your name, right? When people compliment you, do you ever feel like, I mean, this is what I do it for? Like, I know, like, kind of like, of course oh, like it is, because that's, yeah. that's, what that's what I did it for almost. Uh, Be real. Yeah, I mean, definitely. You, I know, I know who I am. Yeah. I'm very, I'm very uh, sure of and aware of who I am and what I mean to the world and the people, the legacy that I've already established for myself. So, for sure, mm -hmm. I definitely am, you know, fully cemented in who I am. So, I definitely don't. I probably, I was thinking about it the other day. I don't think I take compliments well mm -hmm. because I don't always like receive them. Mm -hmm. I kind of like. Oh, but I'm working. Nah, that ain't nothing though. I'm I'm got something else going. Yeah. Oh, I ain't even. And it, in a certain way, that actually is an insult back to someone. It can be that it way can because be, it's yeah, like, see, yeah. well, then I was just saying you did great. 
And then now you're making me feel like I don't have a good gauge on what's great. Mm. Like, oh, I'm small. Mm. You think that's dope? I ain't even on. I'm doing some other. And I was like, damn, why well, am I not smart enough to see right. what's dope? Like, you know, I, I find a way. So I think in certain ways, my ego has me do that sometimes where it's like, I can't just embrace like that. Oh, you like my work? Or you think I'm a dope photographer? Cool. Sometimes I'm like, you still look at me as a photographer, bro? I'm a creative entrepreneur. I run businesses, bro. Yeah. Why are you still calling me a photographer? When sometimes you could just like, man, that's dope, man. I appreciate that or X, Y, Z. I think my ego shows up in some ways like that and then i think my ego really shows up with me feeling like i don't need i don't need outside sources mm. that's when my ego is the worst like i never want to depend on nobody or wait on nobody so i won't and those things in business sometimes can be bad because it's like I could have probably scaled certain businesses i have 10 times faster if i was willing to ask for help or ask for this, or take a meeting with somebody, be willing to collaborate. Like, mm. to this day, we don't do, I don't even pitch for jobs. I've never, I've really never pitched for a job. Like, if you don't hit my email to work, we ain't working. Mm. Like, that's how, that's how my business happens. I'm blessed to be well, a so great blessed. magnet. You blessed. I'm a blessed to be a magnet. Like, I don't have my portfolio isn't up to date. I don't have an EPK. Like, I'm not pitching. I'm blessed, you know what I mean? And But sometimes that's egotistical because mm. there's jobs out there that I probably could be doing that I'm just waiting and one day they're going to call me. That's what I was asking. I was wondering, me. like, does that kind of like, it's it kind of like what we said before, right? Because you, you get to wait in five months when you could have pitched, you probably could have got some. Like, I caught myself recently, like, it's been so, like, automatic. Now I come into a space where, like, all right, I got to start reaching out to people when at one point reaching out to like a hundred people a yeah, week yeah, yeah. then you start getting this automatic it's like oh nah, facts <laughs> they, gonna, they know who I am they yeah, gonna call yeah, me you gonna get a wake up call nah, you, you will and then now you get back to it like damn I could've just hit bro up facts I could've just did this no like, cap there's people I wanna work with right now and sometimes I'm like I, I got the nigga number mm. like, I could just yo yo bro who's some people you wanna work with I'm curious I, want, I gotta run it back with Future okay I got to I gotta redeem that. That's a redemption that story. That's burning, yeah. That's a redemption story. We gotta <laughs> run that one back the right way. And, he, and we've been friends and cool since then. I've been around because of the like. So it ain't like he don't know who I am or blah blah blah. We've been around. We know the vibes. What about? I gotta run that one back. Uzi. Okay. I gotta run that one back. We didn't really get to work work. Like I've been around him and photographed certain things, and we've been in the same room. But not at the level. I really want to run back my whole catalog at the level I'm at now. That makes sense. Like, yeah, I yeah. really, if I'm being honest. So it's really a lot of them. Now, in terms of people I haven't worked with before, um, like ever, um, I want to work with Nas, Cameron, but I want, like, I want the shoot to be like, Old school Cam. Cameron. Yeah, like, yeah. I don't want to do like a, a memoir shoot of him or something. He's wearing a suit or some shit like yeah, that. Like, I, old wanna, school I need like him at least in street clothes and giving that that energy. Uh, I would love to work with, with Nas, him. Um, those probably my, my tops. And Kanye, of course. Um, Jay, of course. But um, those are really my tops. I was wondering if it's like people that, you know, because some people would like have that create – Activity amongst them, like let's say, this might be crazy, but like a little Nas X, mm -hmm. right? Like I could see, cause you creative, he probably like super like creative in that space. Yeah. Like a, a of course, like a fad because he be drippy shit yeah, like that. Yeah. I was wondering, like, do your mind ever go? You see somebody creativity, like, oh nah, we together, that would be a crazy collab for sure. I mean, I think I, like I love working with young artists for that reason, cause you get to explore more mm -hmm. and do more. Um, and then when it comes to like legacy artists, you really want to photograph them like in, the, in their essence, mm -hmm. right? Like I photographed like T.I. before, but it's like, and I told him this, I was like, man, you got, you got dreads. Like, yeah. I, I want the fade. I need, I need the, the ASAP. I need the fade T.I. Like that's yeah. the look out of the hat to the side. Like I do your shoot now, but it ain't like, like it's like, it's different. Yeah. You know, I just did Jeezy's book cover and I love the photos, but it's like, it's still like different. It's so professional. Yeah. I'm like, I love it. White, the cool, yeah. Yeah. I need the, like, I need the clothes you was wearing before we came to the shoot. Yeah. I need to like, 
I want to go back in the time machine and do that. So that's why I like working with newer artists because they're like you catch them in that in moment. moment and that prime. You're able to create something that's like iconic for their fan base at that moment. So those photos go crazy. Like my work I did with Yachty, you know, is some of my most iconic work. The work I've done with the Migos, Metro and Twenty One. That that photo it stands out more because it's in the it's in their prime. It's in the essence of who they are. Yo. It's not overproduced. It's not the big stage, the big, it's like That's raw, crazy. and that shit is real. So a lot of work artists I want to work with are really, like, coming up. But ain't, ain't it crazy how we do as people, right? Because, like, you say, like, sometimes your ego show it the most when, like, somebody might say, like, compliments, right? Yo, you're a dope photographer. What, bro? I am way more than that. Yeah. Now look at you, like, I want to shoot Jeezy with the all white, and he probably, like, Bro, I ain't been that, nah. I'm way past that. Like we do, we nah, like we unconsciously real. do the same thing, that's right? Real. He definitely probably like, yo, bro, we ain't on that no more. Bro. <laughs> He's like, T.I. the hat on the side, nigga. What? Like, like he got right? own businesses, yeah. <laughs> like I'm a businessman, bro. We ain't on that. That's nah, that's crazy. that's a fact, you know. But just you know, my wish list. Nah, that's crazy, bro. Anything? What, what you got coming up, man? Man, the big thing we got coming up is you know global expansion of the studio it's our six year anniversary mm. so that goes back to what i said like sometimes when you do it yourself it take a little longer and you know my ego probably i probably could have scaled it and, and sped up this process but i'm on my own time but right now it's just like global expansion of the studio so opening up more locations mm. is like prime priority number one you ready for that oh we we've been ready i've been overdue Damn. I had a uh, I had a situation. A lot of people. I never told the story, but I had a situation where I was about to open one in Houston, two years ago, and it was right after COVID. And I I went had a realtor set me up a meeting in Houston. Met with the spot. Had the spot locked down. I was actually about to get a spot across the street from Travis Scott's store. He had a spot out there, um, Space Village. Toured it, loved it. Put an offer down, and I quickly realized Houston is not Atlanta. It was racist. Mm. So mm -hmm. they basically like wouldn't even submit, take my offer. I was asking for the exact price they wanted. The space was vacant for like a year and a half because of COVID. And they like hit me back with all this bullshit about, it was a bunch of BS. They wouldn't even take my offer. It kind of scared me a little bit if I'm being honest, just mm -hmm. like, damn, the rest of the world ain't Atlanta. Yeah, It's not black. Like, you know, cause I went in there, street clothes, dressed down. I had my boys with me. Like I, I didn't. I'm like, damn. If I go to another market, man, I'm gonna have to like, I'm gonna have to be professional again. Like, you know, yeah. be extra. This something. Well, that yeah, I'm somebody not. asked you not, cause like that is profession yeah, in so our exact. I'm gonna have to be space. something I'm not, and yeah. it's like that made me feel a little uncomfortable. So it actually stopped me from looking to expand right away. And then I things happen in life. You just get busy on another project. You forget about it, but been ready for that but yo you're such a creative and I'm, i could be wrong i'm just i'm judging you you're such a creative and sometimes with, cre with creativity like especially people like us like we're things look the way they look because we're so hands-on and yeah. i'm wondering if you got another spot could you even manage would it be as successful if you had two spots than one that you got one when you were there like that's where your time go yeah because i'm a um i mean the the blueprint is made mm. it's a made blueprint it's like it's something that can't be duplicated by honestly nobody else, which is why there hasn't been any, I don't want to say it like that, no competition, but it's like, it's why we've been progressing and steadily moving as fast as we have for six years because it's something about the magic that we create and the energy and mm. the feel that's within the culture of Cam Kirk Studios. So all, I still have nothing but free time as well. I don't have, I'm not married, I have no kids. Me going to Houston, Twice oh, yeah. a month ain't nothing yeah, to be yeah. honest. That's it's not right. a it's yeah. not a vibe. It's not nothing I can't do. It's a few hours away or wherever I decide to go, it's a few hours away. So the spirit is already bottled up. It's already ready to go. All we gotta do is just replicate the model. And there if people love it in Atlanta, they're gonna love it in other markets too. Um and that's just what we gotta do. So right now within that, there's prep work to be done with that, right? So Content is like a huge thing that we're focused on with the studio. I've been for years creating content for other people. Now we're like creating content for ourselves. Should look like good too. Starting my own like network and and approaching things my own way. Investing in shows, investing in creators. That's gonna allow our brand presence to have a more national and broader perspective where people can be like, I may have never been in Cam Kirk Studios, but I watch they. I'm on a network or mm. I watch they shit or I I tune into this they got going. It's planting that seed early on, so then when we pull up, 
It's like, I've been watching y'all shit forever. Like, mm. y'all shit is dope. I've been looking at how people come to y'all studio in, in Atlanta, and now I was waiting for you to come to Houston, Charlotte, or wherever you end up going. So it's all part of a process that I'm building that's going to allow it to be a smooth and very easy transition where you're just picking up the essence of Atlanta and bringing it to other places in the world. No, that's hard, bro. I appreciate you for pulling up, dog. Uh, no, no doubt. For the people that don't me. know, I guess you could, you know, the Instagram shit, all that. Yeah, if you want to find me on Instagram, uh, my personal Instagram, people always get this confused. My personal Instagram is the Cam Kirk. Uh, so you got to type that T first, the Cam Kirk. Uh, but the studio page, Cam Kirk Studios, we're celebrating six years, our six year anniversary this year. Um, so you can find me there. My other business is Collective Gallery, Cam Kirk Foundation, my latest nonprofit um, business. So you can find me all over the gram. Everywhere. I appreciate it again, brother. Cam Kirk, J Hill, J Hill Podcast, rap man.